Continuing the story from where we left off, if you're new to the series, please begin with part one, links provided below. In the beginning of the fourth episode, there's a scene where a field is shown. Suddenly, there's heavy rain pouring down, and the people working there start having difficulty breathing. Then a man from a nearby greenhouse comes out to check on the people. He notices that it's not raining where he is, but it's pouring heavily in the field. When he steps out into the rain, he quickly starts having trouble breathing and sadly dies right there. Now, Finola and Brian arrive to investigate this incident. An agent informs them that three other people have also died before, all outside the area where it was raining. They died because of some kind of poison in the air around the farm field. After some time, the doctor informs Brian that the man's body was discovered in the field. Tests revealed that he died due to changes in the atmosphere, with his organs badly affected by the air on the farm. Concerned, Finola and Brian decide to investigate further, wearing protective suits as they enter the field. Inside, they discover strange mutated plants with flowers growing on them. Finola collects one of these flowers in a container for analysis. They then enter the farmhouse and learn that some people are still trapped inside because going out would mean certain death due to the contaminated air. A distressed woman named Sophia approaches them, explaining that her child, Arthur, is missing. Finola and Brian offer their support, assuring her that they will help find Arthur. Additionally, they learn that others went to retrieve their cars but haven't returned. After this, Brian heads to the car parking area where he discovers several dead bodies. As he continues walking, he encounters a large debris field. While examining the debris, he notices a child in the same dangerous zone. Quickly, Brian grabs the child before he can run off, potentially saving his life. He convinces the child to come with him, who turns out to be Sophia's missing son. Sophia is overjoyed to see her son safe. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Maddox is spending time with his family, playing a game with his disabled son, when he notices his wife's phone ringing with calls from an unknown number. Feeling suspicious, Maddox answers the call, but there's no response. His wife quickly intervenes, taking the phone and leaving, leaving Maddox feeling increasingly uneasy. The scene shifts to Finola, who encounters a man named Ephraim, Sophia's husband, whose family had been trapped on the farm. Finola assures him that they are safe, but he cannot meet them just yet. She brings him to the base for safety. At the base, Finola begins researching the strange plant. She explains that instead of conducting photosynthesis like normal plants, this flower is producing chlorine, indicating an ecology similar to that of other planets. This suggests that the debris is creating an environment akin to its own planet. Finola warns that if they don't remove the debris, the entire area could become mutated, endangering the people trapped inside. She requests blood samples from the dead bodies and calls in a special team for further research. They discover that the weather in the area has worsened, with the storm intensifying. Urgency mounts as they realize the need to act quickly before the situation escalates further. After taking Ephraim's blood sample for further testing, Finola proceeds to collect a sample from Arthur as well. Meanwhile, the team's scientist returns with urgent news, emphasizing the need to remove the debris as soon as possible. The increasing storm is causing the affected area to expand expand rapidly, posing a threat to nearby town bounds. However, removing the debris could potentially endanger the people trapped inside as they require proper treatment. Finola requests some time to find a solution, but Brian suggests prioritizing the rescue of those who can still be saved rather than risking more lives. However, Finola disagrees and begins searching for a way to rescue the people trapped in the field, determined to save them despite the risks involved. The researcher informs Finola that the people trapped inside cannot be cured because their bodies have begun to mutate due to the debris, and there's currently no technology or vaccine available to reverse this process. However, Finola recalls the debris they had previously discovered, known as Debris 489, which was used to treat cancer patients. She suggests using it as a potential solution. Despite Brian's skepticism about the idea, Finola discusses it with their superior, Maddox, who approves the plan to bring Debris 489 to the site. Finola then approaches Ephraim to share the idea with him, but Brian intervenes, insisting that it's a classic classified mission and Ephraim cannot be involved. Reluctantly, Finola agrees, instructing Ephraim to go home. Ephraim is devastated by the news, knowing he won't be able to see his family one last time and feeling frightened about the uncertain outcome. As they wait for Debris 489 to arrive that night, tension and anticipation mount among the team. Early in the morning, Finola receives a call from her boss, Priya, who informs her that her father is still alive. Initially skeptical, Finola's doubts are dispelled when Priya sends her a video showing her father exiting a car. 
Priya also reveals that Brian had known about this, but kept it from Finola, feeling betrayed and furious. Feeling emotionally overwhelmed, she goes to meet Ephraim and informs him about the experiment involving debris. After sharing this news, she sets him free, allowing him to reunite with his trapped family inside the farmhouse. Ephraim is overjoyed to see his children again. With debris now on site, the team begins the experiment, administering it to the affected individuals one by one. As the debris takes effect, the people trapped in the storm gradually start to emerge from its grip. Miraculously, the second debris reverses the mutations within them, restoring their health. As the environment begins to stabilize, the team carefully disables the existing debris, halting the mutation and restoring normalcy to the weather. However, Brian is upset by Finola's decision to allow Ephraim to enter the farmhouse, breaking protocol. In a tense moment, Brian confronts Finola, questioning her actions. Finola defends her choice, stating that she followed her instincts and prioritized reuniting families. This marks the end of the fourth episode, leaving tension simmering between Brian and Finola. At the start of the fifth episode, a bus full of passengers suddenly experiences a high-frequency sound, followed by the appearance of a wormhole that swallows the bus. It reappears in another city, plummeting from above and resulting in the deaths of all aboard, except for one injured passenger. Despite his injuries, the survivor is left unaided by a bystander. The scene shifts to Brian and Finola embarking on their journey to investigate the incident. However, Finola remains upset with Brian for not disclosing the truth about her father's survival. Arriving at the location of the crash, they are briefed by an officer who explains that the bus entered a wormhole from New Jersey at 7 p.m. and crashed in Boston five minutes later. He theorizes that the wormhole was generated by debris, resulting in the bus's transportation to their current location. As they delve into the investigation, Investigation, Brian reveals the existence of a similar debris in Germany capable of opening wormholes, but it has been stolen. Meanwhile, they review CCTV footage from the time of the bus's disappearance provided by a New Jersey police officer. They notice a man observing the bus before it vanished, his expression suggesting foreknowledge of the event. Determined to find him, they begin searching the surrounding areas. Their search leads them to the injured passenger, found in a nearby mill, but he has been shot. Despite this, evidence is gathered from his blood, hair, and DNA samples. Brian surmises that whoever opened the wormhole is collecting DNA samples to observe the effects of traversing it, as all passengers survived the wormhole journey but perished in the subsequent crash. Brian and Finola suspect that the terrorist organization known as Influx is responsible for the incident involving the wormhole. They recall similar occurrences in China where all passengers were killed upon traveling through the wormholes. Realizing the potential danger posed by Influx possessing this technology, they fear the organization could make entire vehicles or even cities vanish using such means. Their investigation leads them to search for footage of the Chinese wormhole incident, but it appears to have been removed from the server, suggesting deliberate tampering. Eventually, they obtain information about the man seen on the CCTV, identified as Peter, who arrived from Germany the previous day. MI6, Interpol, and the CIA, among others, are closely monitoring him due to his status as an international criminal. As they track Peter's taxi to his hotel, they discover from CCTV footage that more of his associates are staying there. While watching the video, Finola is stunned to see that these same individuals were involved in her father's murder. Overwhelmed, she contacts her senior Senior, Priya in London, expressing her desire to apprehend the terrorists in the hotel to uncover the truth about her father's apparent survival. However, Priya advises against it, urging Finola to refrain from taking impulsive actions. Finola's frustration grows and she presses Priya for information about her father's situation, suggesting the possibility that he may have been cloned using debris technology. Despite Finola's pleas, Priya remains tight-lipped. Feeling increasingly distrustful, Finola mentions her lack of trust in Brian and their team's inability to locate footage of the Chinese wormhole incident. In response, Priya reminds Finola of the importance of maintaining the delicate relationship between their team and the U.S., emphasizing that both sides harbor their own secrets. She cautions Finola against endanger this relationship with rash actions, urging her to exercise caution and patience. After some time, Brian emerges from the hotel during their investigation, only to be interrupted by a sudden deafening frequency similar to the one in New Jersey. Recognizing the ominous sign, 
Brian informs Finola that a wormhole is likely about to open in the area. Their team of scientists quickly mobilizes, scanning nearby areas and mapping out the affected region on a digital map. However, the sound abruptly ceases, leaving them to realize that the Mafia group are planning something criminal activity by attempting to open a wormhole in their location as well. While Brian searches around the hotel, a member of the terrorist group emerges from the opposite hotel. Spotting Brian, the man attempts to flee, but law enforcement officers nearby swiftly surround him. Defiantly, the man declares their intent to make the entire New York City disappear through a wormhole before fatally shooting himself before the police can apprehend him. After the tense encounter, Finola contacts Priya to update her on the situation, expressing the gravity of the threat. She urges Priya to find the file regarding the Chinese wormhole, emphasizing its importance. Priya responds that she has located the video but cannot send it online. Instead, she arranges for a pen drive to be delivered to a nearby address. When Finola receives the pen drive from a mysterious man, he cryptically reveals that Priya is withholding information about her father's survival and insists that he is indeed alive, not a clone. Before Finola can inquire further, the man departs in his truck. Returning to her cabin, Finola reviews the video but initially finds nothing remarkable. However, upon closer examination, she notices that two cranes in the footage are facing each other, a detail mentioned in a report about stolen cranes from a construction site. Taking precise measurements from the video, Finola compares them to a location in New Jersey where a wormhole had previously opened. She discovers two enormous antennae positioned similarly to the cranes in the video, leading her to conclude that the wormhole is formed between two massive steel antennae with the assistance of debris. After some time, Maddox, Brian's boss, arrives, and they present him with their findings so far. He reveals that the terrorist group intends to make the entire city disappear using wormholes, possibly with the aid of two debris pieces. The team focuses on scanning the area where the high-frequency sound was detected, identifying three large buildings that could potentially house the debris and act as antenna for opening the wormhole. Brian, Finola, and Maddox split up with their respective teams to search these locations. In one of the buildings, they discover the terrorists charging the debris, confirming their suspicions. However, when Brian reaches the first location, it appears deserted with no sign of the terrorists. In Finola's location, she confronts the terrorists, and as they see Finola, they tries to retrieve the debris. The main terrorist, who is also present, opens fire upon seeing Finola and her team approaching. Despite their efforts, most of Finola's soldiers are killed in the shootout. The main terrorist partner, carrying the debris, disappears from there with the help of another debris for create the wormhole at a different location. Determined, the main terrorist descends downwards, with Finola in pursuit. Unknown to her team, Finola recognizes the main terrorist as the man who killed her father which is why she decides to pursue him alone, keeping this information to herself. Meanwhile, Brian manages to locate some pieces of debris after a thorough search. He calls his team of scientists to disable it, but they are suddenly attacked by a group of assailants. In the chaos, the scientists are shot, leaving the debris still activated and posing a significant threat. Meanwhile, the man who had disappeared earlier sneaks to another spot and quietly turns on the debris. This makes both debris pieces sync up and the same loud noise starts up again, meaning the wormhole could open any time, putting the whole city at risk. They need to shut down one of the debris to stop this. Brian asks his injured scientist how to do it, and she guides him through the steps. After a lot of work, they manage to turn off one of the debris, stopping the process and preventing the wormhole from opening. Everyone breathes a sigh of relief. At the same time, the terrorist being followed by Finola turns around and faces her. He hints that he knows something about her father, but doesn't say more. Then the soldiers come and arrest him, closing the case. They seize both pieces of the debris to keep them from causing any more trouble. Finola feels really sad because she still hasn't heard anything clearly about her dad. But then she gets a message from her sister Dee. It's a video of their family when they were kids, all happy and having fun. Watching it makes Finola feel emotional. She remembers how happy their family used to be before everything got messed up. And with that, episode five comes to an end. At the start of episode six, there's a cabin deep in the jungle. Inside, there are lots of strange dead bodies lying around. Above them is a circle of some kind of weird energy. Then a boy enters the cabin with his girlfriend, takes some things, and leaves. After a day or two, the police hear about these dead bodies. They contact the CIA, which makes Brian and Finola begin their journey to the cabin. 
Fanola comes from London and works for MI6, while Brian is with the CIA. They're both searching for debris bus of a spaceship. Fanola's dad, who was a scientist studying the spaceship debris, was thought to be dead. But it turns out he's alive and working with a group of terrorists called Influx. They're stealing the debris. Now, both MI6's Fanola and the CIA's Brian know that George Jones is alive, but they're keeping it a secret from each other. While on the plane, Fanola shares a story about her father traveling to Greece to buy special gifts for her when he was alive. However, she later discovers that the story is fabricated. Fanola's boss, Priya, told her to share this false story with Brian as a way to scale how much the CIA knows about Fanola's father. Upon reaching their destination, an officer informs them that they found three unusual dead bodies. It seems that the debris somehow drained the life from them, creating a strong static field around their bodies. This field is so powerful that it can even charge a mobile phone placed near it. After further investigation, they discover the ID of the elderly people. It turns out these three individuals, who are also 80 years old, went missing from the Passy area just two days ago. During the inquiry, they find out that two teenagers frequented the cabin where the elderly people were found. It appears these teenagers brought the elderly people to the cabin. The bodies are taken to the lab for examination. Meanwhile, in his office, Maddox, Brian's boss, is dealing with the aftermath of apprehending the leader of the terrorist group Influx in the previous episode. They're attempting to hack into the leader's mobile phone, but are unsuccessful. Maddox then calls Brian and requests information about George Jones's whereabouts before his death. Brian recalls that Fanola mentioned earlier that morning that George went to Greece before he died. With that information, Brian ends the call. Brian begins investigating the debris, and they receive a report that another elderly man named Capsi, aged 80, has just been reported missing. Reviewing CCTV footage, they discover that two children picked him up from his old house. They identify Capsi's car from the footage and start tracking it. With the car details, they set off to the same location. Ian Weil, one of the main boys, approaches another elderly man named Subhash, who is also alone. The boy persuades Subhash to come with him. They track the boy's car to a forest and begin searching the area. Suddenly, the main boy retrieves a piece of debris from his bag and gives it to Subhash to hold. Almost instantly, Subhash transforms from an 80-year-old man to a 20-year-old, completely rejuvenated. Similarly, the other two elderly people are also made young. However, there's a catch. These rejuvenated individuals must remain near the debris. If they drift too far, they will revert to the lifeless state seen earlier. As they discuss matters, the police arrive in the forest, prompting the two boys to approach them. However, upon seeing the boys, the police give chase, causing them to flee. Brian manages to catch one of the boys and interrogates him about Capsi's whereabouts and what they did with him. To Brian's surprise, the boy claims to be Capsi himself. Brian brings him back to their camp. Meanwhile, Fanola pursues the other boy, who runs far away from the debris. Unfortunately, the boy instantly ages and collapses, succumbing to the rapid changes in his real age. Another team arrives and all three try to flee, but the police catch Subhash. The main boy is initially inclined to run away with his girlfriend, but she reminds him of the danger facing Subhash and Capsi if they leave the debris. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the boy returns to save them, and he returns to keep watch over the camp. During the investigation, Brian receives a call from his colleague from Washington, informing him that Maddox has ordered an investigation into Fanola's house. Displeased by this, Brian decides to confide in Fanola. He meets her in a car and reveals that her father is alive, a fact he discovered two weeks prior. However, he expresses uncertainty whether her father is a clone or the real deal. Fanola responds that she also recently learned of her father's survival and confirms that he is indeed real. With that, she leaves. While continuing their investigation, they stumble upon a walkie-talkie. Brian decides to use it to directly communicate with the main boy, urging him to bring the debris to them to prevent further harm to people. However, the boy angrily cuts him off before any progress can be made. After receiving a call from the scientist, Brian learns that the recovered bodies are in a state of suspended coma, their aging process reversed due to the debris. The scientist explains that with the debris, they can reverse Subhash and Capsi's rejuvenation, returning them to their original 80-year-old state and preventing their demise. Brian contacts the main boy, Cole, and Cassie again through the walkie-talkie. They reveal their names and story. They were once married and both around 90 years old. Cassie suffered from dementia, leading to memory issues. One day, Cole found a piece of debris on a hill behind their house. When he picked it up, he became young, and he used the debris to rejuvenate Cassie as well. Cole shares his theory with Brian, 
By making more people young, they can sustain life without relying on debris. He believes that if he can make 50, 60 more people young, they can remain youthful indefinitely without needing debris. To test this theory, he was experimenting on different individuals. After Brian's repeated explanations about the dangers of relying on debris, Cole and Cassie finally understand the risks involved. Despite initially considering running away with the debris, Cassie convinces Cole that they have lived a fulfilling life and it's time to let go. They decide to leave the debris behind during the night. As they make their decision, they climb to the top of a cliff and sadly choose to end their lives together. With the help of the debris, Brian and his team are able to reverse their rejuvenation and return turn them to their old age. At another location, Brian's boss Maddox strikes a deal with the Russians, purchasing debris from them. This revelation suggests Maddox's involvement with other criminal groups. With the case resolved, Finola and Brian prepare to return home. Finola confides in Brian, admitting that the story about Greece was fabricated. She suspects her boss, Priya, of deceit and manipulation, revealing that Maddox is also entangled with criminal elements. Brian warns Finola about the raid on her house earlier that day, urging her to proceed cautiously. As the episode concludes, tensions rise as Finola and Brian navigate the web of deception and intrigue surrounding them. Thank you all for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this series. Stay tuned for the next episodes and don't forget to share this video with others.